Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. So previously we've seen and used a lot of functions and now it's finally time to create our own. And a function is basically a block of reusable code that performs a specific task. Now to define a function, you start with the def keyword, which is short for define. Next, you enter the name of your function and let's go for print hello. Then you add a pair of parentheses and inside the parentheses, you can add input parameters. Now this function will not take any input, so you can leave it empty. And finally, you add a colon and you hit enter. Now, as you can see, the code is automatically indented by the IDE. And this is part of Python syntax. And it basically means that all the indented code is part of this function. And you can also indent your code yourself using the tab button. Now let's continue with the function. And we simply want it to print hello on the screen. And once you're done with defining the function, you exit the function body by removing the indentation with the backspace key. Now to call this function, you type the function name with a pair of parentheses. Let's run the code. And you can see hello on the terminal. Now a function can also take input parameters. So whenever the user calls this function, he or she can include an argument to the function. For example, name. And then we can use that in our function. For example, we can use an f string to print hello followed by the name. So now this function expects us to add an argument. And for the name, let's add world. Let's run the code. And now it prints hello world. Now, if you call this function without an argument, then it will result in a type error. Now, what you also can do is define a default argument, for example, stranger. So now when you call the function without an argument, it will print hello stranger. You can also have multiple input parameters. So let's define a function called sum with two input parameters, x and y. And let's define a variable z and set it to x plus y. And finally, let's print z. So let's call the function. Let's give it two and four. Now, so far, we've seen how we can define functions by giving them input. But a function can also return some sort of output, like a string or an integer. And to be clear, a print statement is not an output. It's more like an action. It just prints something in the terminal. It doesn't return any value like a string or an integer or any other data type. And this brings us to the next thing, which is the return keyword. And what it does is it basically allows the function to return a value. And to show you how it works, I will remove the print statement and I will return Z instead. And once I run the code, it will calculate the sum and return it as an integer. So let's print it. And it gives us the sum, which is six. And to have some practice with it, we'll create another function that converts euro to dollar. So let's start with the def keyword, call it euro to dollar, and pass it an input parameter called euro, along with the rate. And I'm using a default argument so that we don't need to specify the rate each time we call this function. And inside the function, we want it to return euro multiplied by rate. Let's call the function and give it six as argument. And now this function will return the dollar amount as a float. Let's store it in a variable called dollar. And let's create a print statement with the f string six euro dollar sign here and a placeholder with dollar inside it. Now, this function returns a float, so we don't necessarily have to store it in a variable first. We can also call the function directly here because the function returns a float, so it's essentially just like putting a float there. Now, let's run the code. Now, let's try something slightly more complex. Let's define a function called calculate change with the price item and amount paid as parameters. And inside the function, we'll define a variable called change. And we set it to amount paid minus price item. Then we print the following f string. The price of the item is dollar sign price item. We also print the f string u paid dollar sign amount paid. And finally, we print the f string u receive dollar sign change. Now let's call the function and pass it 19.99 for price item and 50 for amount paid. 
Now, one important thing, when you have multiple input parameters, the order in which you add your arguments must be the same as your input parameters. So here you have price item first. So price item will have the value of 19.99. However, you can choose the order yourself if you explicitly assign the value to a parameter. For example, I want amount paid to take the value 20 and price item the value 4.99. So as you can see, by using keyword arguments, you can choose the order yourself. Now in Python, you can also store a function into another variable. So let's define a variable and store print hello inside it. And note that we don't use parentheses here. That's because we don't want to call this function right away. We just want to store a reference to that function. And we should only use parentheses if we actually want to call this function. So let's go and call this function. And it gives you the same result as before. Now this function had a default argument, but you can also pass it an argument in the same way you would do it with print hello. And it's still the same function though, because remember you store the reference to print hello inside func. So you're still calling print hello here, but just with another name. Now this means we can also use a function as input parameter for another function. Let's see how we can do that. Let's create a function called work, which prints work. And another function called sleep, which prints sleep. Now let's create another function called do something. And here we want to pass a reference to a function. So remember, no parentheses here. And inside the function, we want to call that function. So here we should use parentheses. So now we can call the function do something and we can pass it any function as argument. So let's try work. And it prints work. Now let's try the sleep function. And now it prints sleep. Now what if these functions had input parameters? So let's say work has a parameter called hours and it prints the f string work for and then hours and sleep has the parameter time and it prints the f string sleep at and then time o'clock. So how would you do it now? Because now the function expects an argument. And what you can do is use another parameter and you can call it whatever you want. I will call it hours or time. And then you pass the same parameter to the function. And now you can just include it as an argument. So let's try it with the sleep function and pass it 10. Let's try it with the work function and pass it 8. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching and until the next time.